Okay, welcome everybody. I'd like to call to order the uh, May 8th um, Committee of the Whole meeting. First, uh, we'd like to acknowledge that the Northern Rockies Administration Center is located in the heart of the traditional territory of the Dene, Cree, and Dune Saw people of Fort Nelson and Prophet River First Nations. We further recognize the rights provided by our treaty. Finally, we also celebrate the contributions and the enduring presence of the Métis people in our region. Please be advised that tonight's meeting is available for the public to attend virtually, is being streamed and recorded. Uh, do we have any council or CAO additions uh, for today? Uh, no. No, council. Hearing none, moving on. Uh, are there any attendees who wish to comment on the agenda? Anyone uh, in the gallery? Anyone online? Hearing none. Um, would council uh, like to accept the agenda? Can I get a motion? So moved by Councillor uh, Souls. Uh, second. Seconded by Councillor Andrews. In favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, moving on. Petitions and delegations. I'd like to invite uh, Regional Development Officer Krista Vandersteen uh, to open and introduce representatives uh, from Urban Systems. Uh, please go ahead. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you so much for having us here today. We're really excited about um, getting close to the end of this downtown revitalization project. It's been one that's been on, on the books and from either considerations and then active work for a little while now. So we're really excited to be here presenting some draft ideas to you. And um, so I'm gonna actually turn over the main part of this presentation over to Petrin and Jaren. They're here from Urban Systems. They drove up from Fort St. John to be able to present to you. And um, yeah, we'll have a good conversation. Go ahead. Thank you, Krista. And good afternoon, Mayor Council. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in Fort Nelson. It's almost a year since I was last up here. No, actually not quite as long. Um, my name is Katrin Saxty. I'm a community, community planner down in Fort St. John. I've had the privilege and the pleasure of working with Northern Rockies for almost the last 20 years on and off on a variety of different projects. Um, and with me today is Jaren Mackey. She's a great member of our landscape architecture and urban design team. And she's also, uh, we drove up together as Krista mentioned. Um, our other colleague Shasta McCoy, who some of you may have seen last year, uh, she was up in August and also up with me in May for this project. She was unable to join today, so it does send her regrets. Um, we're really pleased to be here today. So if we can maybe get the presentation up on the screen, please. Thank you so much. And we'll maybe we'll just go over to the project overview and process slide. Again. Can the virtual attendees see the presentation? No, I see. I see. no just a blue screen. That's all I yeah. see. That's all we see. That's all I see too. That's better. No. Yeah, that works. That's, we can see it. Yeah, that's good enough. Wonderful, thank you. So um, what we're going to talk about first is a little bit of a project overview um, and a little bit of conversation about our process. So we were engaged, as Krista mentioned earlier, about a year ago, um, Shasta and I came up right at the end of May to work collaboratively with Northern Rockies staff, and they've been so fantastic to work with. It's been really, really great. Um, following our site visit in May, we did a fair bit of background work, and we also undertook two rounds of community engagement during this process. Um, 
and we'll, we'll summarize that engagement briefly as we get throughout the, pro, uh, the presentation here today. And all of that engagement led us to uh, two concepts for the downtown plan, which were then refined into a preferred concept. And that's what we're here to present to you today. And we really wanna make sure that we allow ample time for conversation, also recognizing that you have a hard stop at six o'clock. <laughs> so good thing I talked fast. Um, and so what we wanted to do today is, is really present to you this draft downtown conceptual plan. It's high level, it's very conceptual. It's really to present the vision and the, the vision for the downtown that the community has identified as what is important. And this vision actually builds off of a lot of documents that you guys have had in place since 2001. There's been nuggets spread here and there, and this downtown plan aims to bring everything together as well as community input to really present here is what downtown Port Nelson could look like. And so we'll present that and then we'll, um, our goal is that after today, we'll work with staff to revise as necessary and then staff will be bringing back to you the final downtown conceptual plan. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So the drivers and background. So as I mentioned, the downtown revitalization plan, it's a very high level document. It's actually similar to an official community plan in that it sets a long-term vision and you don't implement an official community plan the day after it's adopted. The same way you won't implement a downtown revitalization plan after you have endorsed it or supported it. It takes time to really implement these kinds of plans. They're not quick things, but they set the vision and they have the community support through the community engagement that's been undertaken. So the plan is based on the vision, the needs, and the priorities that we heard during our two rounds of engagement, and it builds off of the previous work that's been done. Things such as your 2011 OCP, your um, town of Fort Nelson, your downtown core comprehensive plan, your community trail master plan, your landscape enhancement plan, all of these plans like I said, have dropped nuggets about things that the community wanted to see in its downtown. And this plan ties them all together. Um, we really wanted to make sure that it unified and created a great vision for downtown Fort Nelson. And then the plan direction is conveyed through a concept for the overall study area and associated recommendations. And then the recommendations are those things that will guide the implementation over time. And there's some things that will take a long time to implement. There's some things that you could probably do quite quickly. Um, it also really helps set you up for future grant funding opportunities because all of these downtown plans are geared, are tools used by local governments across BC to secure grant funding to be able to implement them over time. And um, yeah, let's go into the next slide, please. So why are we doing this now? Um, we heard this a lot. So Port Nelson is going through a bit of a transition, right? And so um, the current OCP also provides policy direction for the downtown. So this, these were things that were important more than 10 years ago. Pedestrian linkages and sidewalks, development of a downtown square, encourage arts and culture displays and events, landscaping, all the things that make people want to stay in the downtown. Because the more you get people to stay in the downtown, the more they feel comfortable, they feel safe, they're going to go into shops, they're going to stop in at down to earth, they're going to stop in at all these places and spend more time in the downtown, which creates a heart for the community. Next slide, please. So this is our study area. Um, it extends from Simpson Trail on the west side all the way east to the airport connector. It goes south to 49th and north to 52nd Avenue. So that was the area that we looked at. It's quite a large area to do a downtown conceptual plan on, but she's a master and amazing. So <laughs> the next slide, please. So this was our process that we undertook. So as I mentioned, we started in late May of 2022. We did some background research. There was an online survey that was sent out. Community engagement occurred in early August of last year. Then the fall was spent coming up with the draft vision, guiding principles, and two concepts. Those were taken back out to the community in January of this year. And from that, those concepts, the preferred elements of both, were blended together to come up with a preferred concept. And that's what we're here presenting to you today. And then after this, we will finalize with staff 
and the final plan will be brought forward again to Council. So the round one engagement, which was from July 18th until September 22nd, with a whole bunch of in-person engagement focused in early August. Um, again, it was really intended on visioning and goal setting for the project. We asked community members what they liked about downtown, as well as what opportunities exist for improvement, what they imagined the future of downtown being. Um, we did four stakeholder workshops. You know, there was three pop-up booths at community events, two walking tours, and we actually had 122 online survey and website responses, which is really, really great input. Uh, we also had mayor and council Northern Rocky staff attend a number of engagement events in August as well. So thank you so much for helping with this project. The second round of engagement, um, this is where we took back forward the two concepts that were developed. That was done in January, from January to February of this year. So we had three open house Q&A sessions at the rec center. There was staff presentations to the Chamber of Commerce. There was display panels up at the rec center so people could come and look at their leisure. And then 66 online survey responses. And so from this, we were able to refine the draft vision and the guiding principles. And then again, obtain that input and really come up with one preferred concept. So from that feedback, that concept was prepared, and this is where I'm going to kick it over to Jaren. Thanks so much, Katrin. Um, so yeah, now we'd really like to go through an overview of the downtown plan and everything that's in it. Um, and so if you're able to jump to the next slide, please. It's just starting out with the structure of it. And the whole plan is guided by that vision that Katrin mentioned. Um, so that forward-thinking future statement crafted based on community input um, really trying to capture what the community envisions their downtown to be in the future. Uh, kind of right underneath that vision are three guiding principles. And those are sort of the foundation through which every other component of the plan was looked at. Um, and they support the different aspects of the vision. And finally, there are the big move recommendations. So implementable actions, uh, that help work towards achieving those guiding principles and the overarching vision. And on the next slide, uh, we, if you don't mind switching, we've got the final, oh, sorry, back one, my bad. Um, we've got the final vision statement. So this draft was put out following the first round of community engagement. And then we asked community members and staff provided input on things that they thought, was miss thought were missing, things that could be refined. And this was the final statement. Uh, that came up. So downtown Port Nelson is a destination and a service center with a thriving and diverse business community and a lively welcoming atmosphere that reflects the community's culture of kindness. Collaboration between public and private spaces contribute to a beautiful connected downtown that is accessible for all and inclusive for both residents and visitors. Port Nelson's unique identity rich history and natural surroundings are celebrated through features and amenities that are designed and built to last. And underneath that vision, you can see those three guiding principles. And those were really, everything else in the plan was filtered based on, is it working to achieve these principles? So economic vitality and strategic investment. Um, when it comes to investing in amenities and furnishings and materials that are durable, designed to withstand winter climates, uh, easy to maintain, and yeah, don't um, give way based on climactic changes. Community connectivity, um, that's referring to both physical connectivity as well as social connectivity. So um, creating paths and linkages for people to get across the downtown and also providing spaces for them to come together and connect. And finally, character and culture. So something that we heard over and over again um, were just these really amazing features of Fort Nelson's character. So that culture of kindness, um, the amazing natural surroundings that you have everywhere, uh, and how can those things be conveyed through amenities, features, and programming in the downtown. And so on the next slide, we have the big move recommendations. And so these are broken out into three different categories based on the types of things that they're addressing. So we've got non-motorized circulation, uh, which includes everyone from pedestrians, uh, cyclists, people using mobility aids, pushing a stroller, all of those different um, multimodal transportation types. Um, and then public realm enhancements. So recommendations focused on things like landscaping, community theme and identity, um, 
get that gathering space, uh, wayfinding and interpretive signage, all different aspects of the public realm with a specific focus on highlighting Fort Nelson's culture and identity through those features. And finally, vehicular circulation. So making sure that proper vehicle circulation, access, parking, all of those things that are so important to Fort Nelson as a service center are maintained, that uh, safety for vehicle drivers is important while also ensuring connectivity and safety for people using those other types of transportation. And so non-motorized circulation. Uh, up on the screen, there's a crop of the non-motorized circulation map, which um, if you want to follow along in the plan, if you have a copy, it's pages 21 to 25. Uh, but what we heard from the community was that accessibility, safety, and connectivity for pedestrians, cyclists, and other forms of transportation was a top priority. And in order to address that, the plan proposes multi-use paths. Uh, so the main multi-use path loop uh, is highlighted with number one, the dark purple dotted line up there. And the proposed route extends from the existing community trail uh, along 50th Avenue North Boulevard, up along 51st Avenue West, back into the boulevard and connecting to Art Fraser Park. And the really key thing about multi-use paths is that while sidewalks are focused on pedestrian only circulation, multi-use paths are designed to be wider and accommodate those additional types of circulation. They're separated from the roadway. Uh, so if you have young kids just learning to ride a bike or just someone who's not as confident sharing the road with cars, it provides that degree of separation. Something that we also heard from the community was a desire for pedestrian connectivity along 49th Avenue. Um, because you have uh, some businesses along that road, there's also a connection to Art Fraser Park, you have things like the Friendship Society, and so the plan also proposes a future path for consideration um, along that avenue, and that's the lower number one, the light purple dotted line. Uh, when it comes to pedestrian crossings and connectivity, the plan proposes pedestrian activated highway crossings uh, at Airport Drive, as well as 42nd Street. Uh, the Airport Drive crossing is that uh, red arrow with the number two, and as well as a realigned pedestrian crossing at 44th Street and Alaska Highway uh, to ensure that anyone crossing the highway there, uh, that it's accessible and a hard surface all the way across and that you can be outside of the vehicle traffic. Um, and all of these crossings, um, all of the things involved in the highway definitely require further consultation um, with all of the parties involved, but this was really to bring forward, these were the, some of the key crossings that the community identified. And finally, we have downtown sidewalks. So for the most part, the plan proposes retaining two meter wide sidewalks throughout the study area as per uh, your current subdivision development servicing bylaw. But there are a few areas, uh, which are number three, the turquoise dotted line there um, on Liard Street uh, between 50th Avenue North and 51st Avenue West, as well as part, part of 50th Avenue North, um, just widening sidewalks where it's feasible to uh, allow for street trees, sidewalk signage and displays, outdoor seating and dining, um, all of those sorts of things. Uh, next, we can move on to public realm enhancements. And some of the things that we heard from the community were that the boulevard trees and tree lighting are some of the most loved community amenities. Um, that the community would like a gathering space downtown. Uh, that there are opportunities to showcase Fort Nelson's character, identity, and history throughout the downtown study area. And that maintenance of vacant lots could help improve the appearance of downtown. And so the big moves proposed, the first one is around community theme and identity. And so we had heard a few ideas from the community throughout the process about possible um, themes or an identity to kind of guide the furnishings and uh, branding of downtown. And so the recommendation is to develop a branding and wayfinding strategy to really build off of those things that were heard, come up with a plan as well as a refined materials and furnishings palette that can guide and make that whole downtown feel like one cohesive whole. Uh, community gathering space. Um, there are some, the plan doesn't identify a specific location for this, but does uh, point out some existing lots that could be considered. And the recommendation is to acquire a parcel to develop as a permanent gathering space downtown, which I'll touch on in a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Uh, and finally, when it comes to boulevard trees and landscaping, um, preparing a phased replacement plan for the trees so that those existing trees are able to be kept up as long as they're healthy, but having a plan for as they age and need to be removed, how that's going to be replaced. And what we heard from the community were that a natural looking feel as well as ease of maintenance 
were two of the main considerations to keep in mind moving forward when it comes to boulevard trees. And so the plan proposes that as trees age and need to be removed, replacing them with naturalized groupings of two to three trees spaced unevenly along the boulevard. And this has a few benefits. Um, you're able to adjust the spacing to keep maximum visibility to businesses along the corridor, as well as at intersections. Uh, you can have a more diverse mix of species, which helps with disease resistance. And it's also just less noticeable when a tree needs to be removed um, once you have that kind of more staggered spacing um, and effect. And finally, there are also opportunities to incorporate some naturalization planting and other green infrastructure opportunities to help with things like stormwater management. And some potential locations for those are shown on the plan. Other public realm enhancements proposed, uh, building off that branding and wayfinding strategy, uh, wayfinding and interpretive signage. So having informational signage around the downtown, telling people what's there, how to get there, um, and really help people navigate to, through, and around the downtown. And also an idea that came up a lot during engagement was the opportunity to have a sort of self-guided historical walking tour. Uh, so providing interpretive or educational signage about different people, events uh, in Fort Nelson's history or present uh, that people can walk themselves along, whether they're locals visiting or just taking a break before they keep moving. And then public art, provide opportunities for temporary or public art, permanent public art installation throughout the downtown. And finally, development and maintenance. So collaborating with property owners to clean up vacant lots, as well as exploring opportunities for whether it's temporary seating or uh, pop-up opportunities on those lots, and also in future, uh, continuing to encourage street-oriented development in the downtown. Uh, so zero setback development, so you can have those sidewalk displays spilling right out into the public boulevard uh, and really encouraging those connections that flow between the public realm into the businesses. And so this plan here is a conceptual gathering space that Shasta had sketched out uh, on a non-specific lot, uh, but representative of some of those existing vacant lots in Fort Nelson that incorporates some of the top uh, priority amenities that we heard during engagement. Uh, so that includes covered market stalls, uh, a band shell stage or performance space, um, open green space with trees, um, some seasonal flex space, that whether that's a plaza in the summer that can be converted into a skating rink in winter. There's some really cool examples of that in other winter cities throughout Canada, um, as well as a fire feature. And this one had a few maintenance concerns that were raised as well. So definitely everything here, uh, again, like Katrin said, um, will need to be looked at in more detail as the designs are refined. But this is really intended to capture those key things that the community members brought forward. And then on this slide, these are just some example images of some of those public realm things and how other communities have incorporated them um, into their branding and wayfinding, as well as their boulevard trees. Um, yeah, their signage, their furnishings, and also some quick like pop-up parks or temporary things that can be put up um, more in the short term. And then moving into vehicular circulation, um, the thing that we heard from the community was really that reinforcement that Fort Nelson is a service center for anyone traveling on the Alaska Highway and that any recommendations proposed in the downtown plan really need to support local, industrial, and tourist traffic circulation and access. And the recommendations in the plan, as I mentioned a bit earlier, they're really focused on preserving that circulation and access as well as uh, vehicle, vehicle driver safety, but also ensuring connectivity and safety for pedestrians and other modes of transportation. And so the plan on uh, the screen here is an excerpt from the downtown core enlargement plan that's included in the documents. And some of the big moves proposed include intersection improvements. So number 10 there, uh, Airport Drive and 50th Avenue North, um, realigning the legs of those intersections um, as they're currently offset, as that is helpful for sight lines and vehicle driver safety. Uh, this was also identified as a consideration in the recent um, traffic safety review for that new development. And then also reviewing the safety and alignment of the Alaska Highway, 50th Avenue South and 54th Street intersection. Um, a few options were proposed during engagement uh, for this intersection, but no clear consensus was reached. And so further studies, discussions and consultation um, around that intersection. And finally, uh, well, this one goes back a bit to the downtown sidewalks that I mentioned a bit earlier. Uh, but on some areas in the downtown, adjusting road cross sections, such as on 50th Avenue North, where it's required to accommodate those wider sidewalks, 
and adjusting the cross section on Liard Street between 50th North and 51st Avenue West to accommodate those wider sidewalks, street trees, and site furniture. And I'll talk to the I'll speak to this a bit later when I um, talk about the implementation plan. Uh, but these major street any any major streetscape improvements um, these would typically be timed with other required utility upgrades or other work that's having to happen to really maximize efficiency in that area. Uh, on the next slide, we have parking. So maintaining the angle parking on 50th Avenue North uh, and in some areas where there are large off street parking lots available, exploring opportunities to um, accommodate wider sidewalks or landscape buffers to really improve that pedestrian comfort. Um, providing signage and amenities for dedicated tourist and RV focused parking, as well as dedicated industrial focused parking. Uh, so everything from those wayfinding signs telling people how far and where they can go to get to things, um, picnic tables, seating, all those sorts of things. And finally, in uh, with the current um, proposed alignment of the multi use path, there is a section where the boulevard currently isn't wide enough uh, that would require um, removing some sections of the parallel parking on the south side of 50th Avenue North. So that top number 12 with the dark purple line um, to accommodate the multi-use path in the boulevard, boulevard. And then the last vehicular circulation recommendation um, um, about wayfinding signage. Uh, so providing cohesive highway frontage and gateway signage, again, uh, welcoming visitors, showing what Fort Nelson has to offer and designing that in conjunction with that overall wayfinding strategy to really create a cohesive feel for the downtown. Can I sneak a question in? Just so that path 12, mm -hmm. so that would be a, a proposed multi-use path and mm -hmm. that would take the angle parking away from the uh, on street? Currently, the way, the way it's sketched currently would be on the south side. So where you currently have the parallel parking, um, mm -hmm. extending the boulevard. Uh, so it would remove the parallel parking on the south side to have the path next to the existing ditch is the way that it's shown currently. The angle parking would stay in the, the angle wood is the parallel that would the be gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, just judging by the pictures, I, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, and so that's a lot of recommendations and a lot of information. And so the plan also includes uh, a phased implementation strategy. Uh, and so the big moves have been broken out into suggested projects and phases. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the considerations that have an impact on phasing. Um, but the way that some of the projects were broken out currently was based on considerations for what could be constructed in one construction season, um, as well as they can, they're all subject to change and able to change as priorities shift, as partnerships emerge, all those sorts of things. Uh, but currently they're broken out into quick win projects, short-term projects, medium-term projects, and long-term projects. And when it comes to the quick win projects, uh, those are some items that could, could potentially be implemented within the next one to two years to really keep momentum going and initiate the plan and also help build momentum for future projects and phases. Uh, so things like graphic wraps uh, on existing kiosks or site or existing kiosks or waste receptacles, uh, graphic or artistic bike racks, kind of like those colorful ones that were seen earlier. Uh, small interventions like that, they sometimes almost feel Katrin likened it to when you paint your house and all of a sudden it feels so nice and new. Um, uh, and really just help bring that excitement into the downtown. Um, and also a formalized public art program. Uh, the plan identifies some locations and options for consideration when it comes to murals, sculptures, other sorts of things. Uh, but really coming up with policy, a program for how to work with those artists um, and where and how to implement art in the downtown. Uh, the temporary parklets are those seasonal pop-up spaces, whether that's just uh, somewhere shaded to sit uh, in the summer, other activities. Um, there are some amazingly creative parklets out there, everything from mini putt courses to uh, um, artisan displays, those sorts of things. Um, the gathering space parcel acquisition, whether that is identifying a parcel for purchase, maybe there's a parcel that someone wants to donate, maybe an opportunity comes up that you just can't uh, pass up, um, but looking more into develop uh, the design, site specific design and development of that permanent gathering space. Um, a boulevard tree inventory to really have documented the condition and lifespan of those existing trees and a detailed phased replacement plan uh, for what will be going in that tree's place once it needs to be removed. 
Uh, and then also kicking off the branding strategy and wayfinding plan to really build on those community, those ideas that were heard during community engagement for uh, what the theme or identity of downtown Port Nelson can be. And as I mentioned, the phasing is dependent on a lot of factors, including the timing of deep utility upgrades. Uh, so when things like your sanitary are need to be upgraded, uh, it, that's typically when you would be able to then do those larger streetscape improvements uh, because you have the opportunity where you have to do a full depth reconstruction of the whole road and reimagine what it looks like on the surface. And that's kind of what this plan is proposing with any of those ones that are larger changes as opposed to just extending back the sidewalk or things like that. Um, also the availability of funding. Um, as Katrin mentioned, this plan is really intended to help uh, Northern Rockies uh, identify and leverage funding for these projects. Uh, and it identifies a few opportunities and potential projects for consideration. And then also council and community priorities. So everything in this plan is intended to reflect what we heard from staff, council, the community throughout this process, but priorities can change. Some projects might become more urgent than others. Uh, there will be need to pivot, all those sorts of things. And the phasing plan is intended to be able to be adjusted um, as needed to meet those needs and changing priorities. And again, as this is all a high level plan for that future vision, uh, detailed design for any of these proposed projects would need to take place before construction. And that's really when it gets into looking at your exact trail alignment, what the exact implications would be for parking and do we need to shift it to maybe adjust that? Um, how does it work with existing drainage patterns? Um, how would it go around existing trees in certain locations? Um, and that's really working with public works and lands team to uh, operational considerations, all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, that is a brief overview of the draft downtown plan. And following this session tonight, um, we'll go back and incorporate your comments as well as staff's comments um, to update the plan. And we'll submit that final plan to Krista and Rada and the team, and they will present it back to you. And so with that, uh, we would really like to hear your questions and comments um, and discussion about everything. Thank you so much. Great, thank you very much for the detailed presentation. Uh, would anyone like to uh, ask any questions or comments? Councillor Andrews. I did have a lot of concerns, but I was looking at this as a finalized plan, being concept design and kind of a guiding principle for how we want to go. I don't foresee any major issues. I like the majority of what I see here. So well done. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Mayor Fraser, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Katrina. I'm sorry I'm not there to uh, to uh, hear your your uh, presentation in person, but thank you very much to both of you for uh, for coming to the community. Uh, and I also wanted to thank you for the initial thoughts that you had, comments that you had with respect to this being really a visionary document, and it. Uh, you know, really is conceptual in its design. And I think a lot of the concepts that there that are that you've presented are are good. I mean, there's, you know, I, I could nitpick it. I think I'm probably the same as Kyle with respect to where some of the dots should go and you know what 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 some of the traffic patterns should look like. But that's something for us to to look at in the future as you know as as we move forward. But the, the individual concepts that you present are are good. I think it gives us uh, part of the puzzle and and now we can take these pieces and and over the years uh make it look like you know figure out what that what the picture actually looks like with all these puzzle pieces so i'm uh i'm really excited uh for it you know i don't know that that the economy will allow us to do a whole lot of work in the in the near future but i also like that you've sort of set out a phased approach how some of these things can be done uh more quickly than others so thanks very much Councillor Gerwin, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I haven't taken part in the process. Um, I think like, I don't know how many community engagement ones I went to, but I really enjoyed the walking tours. Um, I just wanted to say that so often, you know, you take part in the process and then the consultant goes away and then you come back with this plan and you go like, mm, you know, that's not what I heard. However, this plan, like I really, 
see and what the community was telling you. So like, really, I commend the plan. Like you have really delivered what I heard the community tell you. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Great. Are there any comments, uh, further comments or questions? Council. I'm excited about this and uh, I'm wondering, so now we have the, in the recommended plans, what's the next step of creating committees or, or uh, uh, working with staff to find budgets? But um, I really like the idea of the signage and the wayfinding because we have a lot of spaces in our community that are really unique, and, but where, how do you find them? Like even the rec center, the swimming, the rock climbing, the walking trail, the Phoenix Theater, the library, like all those things are not identified when you walk into town. So I really think that that um, type of quick win would be something that um, you know the staff can look at um, finding. But the other question I had was, um, because I wasn't part of the journey when, when you started this, was um, the paved stones. Like I find them very, <laughs> like a safety hazard. Um, have we looked at other types of um, streets that we can put in or sidewalks that can be put in? Yes, thank you. So that was something that we heard a few times as well regarding the paving stones. Um, and currently, again, it's a, it's a high level concept um, and things could be refined when you develop that materials and furnishing palette, uh, but more of a, your typical concrete sidewalk, but then there are also opportunities for things um, like integral colored concrete where it has the color mixed directly in. And so it's not a paint on top. Um, it's not a paving stone, those sorts of things. Uh, there's also opportunities. Um, there was an example previously of some sand blasted patterns uh, that don't create the same level of tripping hazard and they don't heave the same way as paving pavers. Uh, but yeah, also really working with the ongoing work that's already happening to replace those pavers um, to try and incorporate that into the plan. Okay, uh, Councillor Souls, go ahead. So in uh, this, this type of work that you do, you've done multiple places, of course. And uh, I can think of some very good downtown core uh, places elsewhere in the province in the cold part of the province that have to access or have access both in winter and summer and it's it's good so question i have is regarding what is your experience working with the brown space in communities we have quite a bit of brown space here and uh that's a lot of it's in our downtown in the core area that is reflected here and by and large it's it's privately owned or corporately owned uh infrastructure what has been your experience around brownfields? Because we've had, like we're watching now, uh, one brownfield is, uh, that the new McDonald's is being built on. It's a, it's a fabulous story in, in my mind. I believe it's great to see that there's, there's actually two of them that have been converted back to a saleable property over the course of time. But is there, do you have comments around that? Yes, thank you for that. You're right. Brownfields in our downtowns are such a, they're such a nice word, right? And it is really tricky because you're absolutely right. The vast majority of them are privately owned. I know in the past, there used to be a lot of grant funding for remedial efforts. It really depends on the nature of what's on the brownfield site, because it could be very costly for somebody to remediate it. And a lot of what they have to do to a brownfield site in order to develop it afterwards depends on what was there in the first place. So for example, gas station sites, we still have them in Fort St. John. I've been up here for 20 years. And I'm still walking past the same brownfield site and, I'm, and it's been there for 20 years before I showed up. So it's, and for many of these companies or businesses or property owners that own these sites, they're paying taxes on vacant land. So it's nothing for them. So there is no incentive for them to dispose of it or to remediate it. So it's really hard to say, what can we do to do that? There are, I think there were, and I'd have to go and look and see if there are still grant funding opportunities, but you know, you do have the ability to somehow incentivize it. There's gotta be, there's tools and mechanisms for sure. It's, it's also challenging when there's greenfield sites available for people to develop, right? If you have to choose between 
a brown field that is contaminated in some way, shape or form or a green field, you know, it, it, you're going to go to the green field. You're going to go for the easy site to go develop on. And that's just part of sort of the economy as well and the market drivers that influence um, this because with it being privately owned, you are limited in what you can do. I'm sorry. I wish I had better better answer for that. And I just to further that comment, uh, that question from Councillor Souls, perhaps with the development of this plan, it might incentivize some of those companies um, uh, to uh, to do something with the with the land to take part in the uh, the revitalization. So, um, and also the the shuttered businesses that are that are throughout the community. A lot of that is uh you know 50th avenue south has quite a few businesses that are closed and no future plans so well and it's always very interesting too what sometimes when you get something like this and i think i think jaren maybe used the word it's like a catalyst right so if you see something going in and it's like oh that looks good and you're like oh maybe i could do that right and it becomes like this this cycle self-perpetuating itself and then the next person and the next person then and, and so it but it's at some point, somebody needs to take that first step. And we're really hoping that this plan is that first step. That's great. Okay, are there any final uh, comments or questions? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, we'll move on. Um, so we've got uh, 6.1, the administration report 1123, uh, draft downtown revitalization review. Um, would council like to receive this report for information? Councillor Andrews moves that. We get a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Enox. All in favor? All opposed? That carries. Okay, new business arising. Um, there are no councillor CAO uh, additions. Um, we'll move on to the public news media question and answer period. Are there any attendees who wish to comment in the gallery or online? Okay, hearing none, I think that concludes our business and uh, I will declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. I'll see you at six. See you at six.